This short video is intended as a message to the viewers of the Black Rider film series of videos concerning Lost Flight MH370. Some viewers have asked over the last few years whether I intend to continue this series into the future. The answer is yes. It has been almost two years since I posted episode 5. After creating episode 4 and 5, I became burned out on the creative process that produced those two episodes. I intend to get my butt back in gear and get episode 6 finished off over the next few months. Episode 6 of the series is already partially complete. At present, I plan to create at least two more episodes beyond episode 6, which will be episode 7 and 8. Thank you for your interest in my series of videos on Lost Flight MH370. What follows is a short preview of Lost Flight MH370 Episode 6. In Episode 6 of Lost Flight MH370, we will begin our investigation into the possibility that MH370 was lost due to human intervention. We want to take a look at whether it is possible for a passenger to commandeer an aircraft considering the current safeguards in place in commercial aviation. In this episode, we will also look at the possibility of a cabin crew member taking over the aircraft. We will examine the known circumstances surrounding the key time frame in which MH370 was diverted from its planned flight route to an alternate route that took it deep into the southern Indian Ocean. Before we dive too deeply into the various scenarios by which a passenger or crew member could have commandeered the aircraft, let's look at some basic facts about the passengers and cabin crew. Who exactly was on the aircraft? Did anyone have the expertise or skill set to carry out such a complex and exacting mission? Let's begin with just some basic facts about the passengers and cabin crew. There were 227 passengers aboard the Boeing 777, designated Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, when it departed Kuala Lumpur on March 8, 2014. The 227 passengers were traveling under passports from 14 countries, though two of these passengers were actually Iranians traveling under stolen passports, as we shall see. Let's take a quick look at the layout of the Boeing 777 passenger cabin and how the passengers were dispersed throughout the cabin. The cabin of the Boeing 777-200ER designated Malaysia Flight 370 was broken down into two major sections, business class and economy class. The business class section in the forward part of the cabin consisted of 35 seats of which 10 were occupied. The economy class section in the aft part of the cabin consisted of 249 seats, of which 217 were occupied. The aircraft thus had a total of 284 passenger seats, of which 227 were occupied. The largest group of passengers aboard the aircraft consisted of 153 passengers under Chinese citizenship. In this graphic, we can see the dispersal of the Chinese citizens within the Boeing 777 cabin. The next largest group was comprised of citizens from Malaysia, with 38 Malaysian passengers aboard the aircraft. Here we can see the dispersal of the Malaysian passengers. Next in size group-wise are the seven citizens of Indonesia. They are dispersed as shown here. After the Indonesians, the next largest group consists of six citizens from Australia. They are dispersed as shown here. Next, we have five citizens of India as shown here. We then have four passengers of French citizenship. Their positions aboard the aircraft are shown here. Next, we have three citizens of the United States, one adult and two children. They are positioned as shown here. 
we then have two citizens of Canada seated as depicted below. There were two citizens of New Zealand aboard the aircraft as shown here. There were two citizens from the Ukraine as displayed here in our graphic. We have one citizen from Taiwan seated as shown in the graphic below. There was one citizen from Russia seated in the business class section as shown in the graphic below. We have one citizen from the Netherlands seated as shown below. We have one person traveling under an Italian passport seated as shown below. This person was actually a citizen of Iran traveling under a stolen passport. A second Iranian citizen was aboard the aircraft also traveling under a stolen passport, a passport from Austria. This is just a statistical breakdown of the passengers aboard flight MH370, but real life is not about statistics or numbers, it's about people. Let's take a moment to put a human face on the real cost of this tragedy. The human lives extinguished in the early morning hours of March 8, 2014.